Hey guys, it's Duconrad1 and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Again, we are doing a uh, little update here on crying and I thought it was about time. It's been a while since we've actually done one of these videos and I'm excited to do another. In this video, we are uh, what was originally the throne room of crying. We have repurposed it into a um, like a council hall where the military leaders, the colonels and stuff can all get together and sort of plan out what they have going on, you know, you know, maybe even like the politicians and such can come here and um, they can, so this is just one of the council chambers or whatever. Um, if crying ever becomes what I hope it to be, um, there's going to be a lot more stuff eventually, but uh, it all depends. So um, right now my main focus is on Seabridge, but I'm still going to be doing these little update videos when I can of crying because a lot of you like to see these videos and uh, I enjoy doing them too or while I'm doing them. Um, I like this style of video where it's kind of like a first person time lapse. It's easy to do. Um, all I have to do is just cut it a little, you know, here and there. And um, it's also a really cool chance for me to do these Q&A sessions. Um, so I have not forgotten, guys. Today, or in this video, we are going to be doing that Q&A that I said I was going to do in the last video. Um, I do have a few questions. Uh, I did, or I've grabbed as many as I could from that video. Um, as many as I could see and um, so I will be answering your questions today and hopefully it will be informative and fun. So um, our first question is from a Red Ranger and he asks how tall am I? I am six foot and two inches. For some of you that were uh, you know wondering what I look like um, you can go over to Victor Comics' channel there's a video down in the description and uh, Victor and I did a vlog in Philadelphia when he was over here in America so you guys can go check that out, and um, you can see uh, it's, a, it's a hilarious video. We did some pretty silly things, so uh, I would suggest you guys go over there, and if you want to see how tall I am, um, that's you know a good place. So that is, for you Europeans that go on the metric system, um, 188 centimeters. I'm pretty sure that's correct. I'm pretty sure I calculated that correctly. But anyway, um, on to our next question is lions here. How did you learn to cluster all of those all those stuff into one plot? Um, so he wants to know how did I learn how to detail? Like, what was the what's the process that I use in order to add in details and such? Well, the answer to that, Lions, is I really um, it's really not a method per se. You know, the details just kind of happen. You kind of realize, you know something needs to go there and you have a certain palette of blocks like a, a certain choice of blocks you know us using metadata we have a whole bunch of blocks that we can use and so we have to you know figure out how to use and manipulate those metadata and biome specific textures in order to reach our end goal of a you know a very good build something that people can look at and go wow so, you know, that's pretty much what it is, is you gotta find, you know, certain areas. It's all discretionary at the time, like, you know, so we're building a castle here, and once we start coming to the detail portion towards the end of the video, you know, I'm struggling to figure out, you know, what should I put there, you know, what should I put here, and, you know, how should I do this over there, you know, it's, it's always this constant frame of mind that you have to really think hard as to what you can do and what you can add and uh, there's always something more that you can do and always something more that uh, you can do to improve your build um, but don't go over detailed now that's that's something that I I personally am not a big fan of is over detailing you know just you know clustered everywhere all this different kinds of blocks everywhere it's really confusing it causes the eye just to go like you're like what is going on and uh, so yeah just keep that in mind so um, you know don't go over detail don't under detail you know somewhere meeting somewhere in the middle is uh, pretty important and that's how you get a really nice build a really nice um, plot going so um, yes that's that so now Sean M asks I recall you mentioning once on a live stream that you played airsoft so what kit do you run with well Sean <coughs> excuse me I use an M4A1. It has um, some different types of uh, uh, attachments to it. It has a um, what do you call it? It has a scope on top. 
Um, it has all those different, like it has a foregrip. This is, it's a heavy gun. I, I, I don't know how heavy it is, but it's, you know, it's pretty darn heavy. So, you know, you got to be pretty tough to be able to carry that gun around. But anyway, um, I've really enjoyed the gun, except, you know, the cord management on the front. You got to put it inside like a uh, little compartment that's really difficult because it's so cramped. And that's where the battery goes. And that's all where all the cords and fuses go. So it's really difficult to, um, you know, close it up and everything. So that's one of my pet peeves about it. But, you know, the gun shoots great. It shoots at 440 FPS. Um, at least that was the stock speed. Um, the gears have been having some weird, or been have been weird lately. Um, I haven't played airsoft since last year, probably around summer. But we we usually have you know summer get-togethers, and that's when we play a lot of airsoft. So um, we do have big airsoft parties and such, and it's a lot of fun. We uh, I don't I've never played like quote unquote professionally with a team that goes around the you know the states and. You know competes against other teams I've, I have never done that never done something of that sort but you know I just play with my friends and we have a lot of fun um, we do have big parties and you know we shoot each other up pretty well and before that I was into paintball um, that's back when you know um, you know we had some money to throw around and this was back in high school and you know we had guns we had our own giant co2 tank to refill our um, gas you know the gas for our guns we had all kinds of crazy stuff and uh, really thought that it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, definitely, I would say paintball is a lot more fun than airsoft per se. Uh, but you know, airsoft has its, you know, because you don't want to get hit by a paintball. So you are much more, you know, you're much braver in say uh, airsoft because you can walk right up to someone and you know, depends on how powerful their gun is. But you know, the airsoft BB isn't going to hurt anywhere near as a paintball. So paintball you know, pretty much ensues a more realistic scenario where, you know, if their gun's pointing at you, you don't want to be on the receiving end. Like, I mean, it's the same thing with Airsoft, but again, Airsoft isn't near as bad. Um, but yeah, paintball was a lot of fun back when we did that. So, um, but yeah, before I had the M4A1, I had a MC, the Vietnam style M16 with a sort of triangular shaped barrel that sort of gets smaller towards the end. Um, I've always liked the M16 style of uh, rifle. It's, it's always worked well for me, except for the grip. For some reason, the grip, um, there's like one screw that goes up through the grip into the main compartment of the, of the gun. And for some reason, that always loosens up and it starts falling off. So every, every M16 gun we've gotten, I've had to jixi rig it and find, you know, put in different screws and, you know, really kind of, you know, torque it on there in order to keep it um, from, you know, twisting off like it usually does. So I hope that answers your question, Sean. Yes, I love Airsoft and uh, it's a lot of fun. So, um, another question from Sean actually is, aside from Return of Metas or some version of it, what features or block types would you like to see in Minecraft? What I would like to see ultimately is a modding API. That would solve pretty much 90% 90, 90 of the problems that we encounter here on Ravent. Um, a modding API would basically allow for clients to download the mods of the server they're trying to join so that it all works and so you can join on default Minecraft and then when you're joining um, like all conquests all the mods you needed is already um, provided from the server you're trying to join so it downloads directly from the server the modding API pretty much does everything for you and then that would solve the issue see you know right now you know everyone has to you know know what they need to do first they need to know oh I need to um, download this and I need to download that and I need to do this do that and that's one of the big reasons why we haven't gotten modded yet is because of those issues is um, you know there's everyone has different clients and then if we have it modded everyone's gonna have issues and it's gonna cause all sorts of problems so um, you know, ultimately, that's what I want is a modding API. And as far as blocks, that would come with a modding API or something of the sort, you know, because you know, I don't really have any specific blocks I want, but I'm sure there's a ton of things a monster could do if we had a modding API. 
So now, 2G1A Tutorials asked, what is your current job? Could you see yourself as a full-time YouTuber if you had the opportunity? If I had the opportunity, yes, but YouTube is definitely becoming too saturated nowadays for that to be a possibility, um, especially you know in the Minecraft genre. You know, Minecraft tends to be the highest, you know, highest you know amount of YouTube videos uh, for one thing is allocated to Minecraft. That's where most of you know YouTubers really spend their time, and that's where you know everything kind of comes together so finding content for Minecraft and making it original is becoming and is extremely difficult um, and it's becoming more difficult day by day due to you know the content continuing continuing to saturate um, so being a youtuber nowadays unless if you're extremely lucky um, is very very difficult so um, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but um, see, all I'm doing right now is just trying to be a voice in the Conquest community and try to say, we are here. And I want to continue saying that, I want to say that we are still here. And um, But yeah, my current job is I'm a security guard uh, at a uh, warehouse as a, at a truck gate. So um, that is where I am currently, and I'm in the job market looking for something else. I have some other plans uh, coming up, so hopefully... Um, those will pan out as we get closer. So um, I will update you guys on that later on, hopefully. Um, so is there a meaning or history behind the Conquest Raven logo? And again, this is by, um, the question is by 2G1A Tutorials. I just asked Monsterfish, he said that there is no meaning behind it, like no official meaning. Um, there's nothing like, no backstory or anything, he just made it like a spur of the moment kind of thing and he said, oh this is pretty cool. Raven said, oh this is pretty cool, so then they decided, hey, let's use it. And so that's how the Conquest logo, logo slash Raven logo came into being is, um, you know, they just kind of made it and it worked. So. Um, I wish there was some cool meaning behind it, like maybe each part of it means something, but no, it doesn't, so unfortunately, um, I don't, I hate to disappoint you guys. So, um, Bob Jow, Bob Jow asks, where does realistic turn to fantasy? And Bob, that is a very good question, that's a very difficult thing to, um, really establish is because there's a fine like it's not a fine line between realistic and fantasy like there's no black and white it's always gray when it comes to um, the building techniques and styles that would uh, indicate fantasy same thing with realistic but you know because there's a lot of things and you know realistically um, you know that you even look fantasy like you know there's a lot of stuff in real life like you can just think about like um, different castles that you know look really like fantasy and stuff, but you know it's real um, because it's whatever. Well, you know what I'm trying to say, but um, you know. So when you think about fantasy, you think about the palette. You think about how extreme it is, like how um, you know is the terrain realistic? Like I would consider crying, like the terrain, like everything it is is a mix between realistic and fantasy. The reason why I say it's a mix. Um, is because, you know, obviously the castle looks just, you know, just random. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of different things uh, and uh, parts about it that just seem very fantasy. Now, there's also the terrain. Like, if there was actually terrain, like the terrain that Krine is built on, um, that would be incredible. Like, incredible, incredible. But, you know, again, it's a realistic fantasy because the terrain, you know, it looks like it's, you know, pretty realistic. You know, it still needs a lot of work. However, it's pretty fantasy. So, um, but yeah, realism is more or less like what could really work in real life? Like, could this really work? Um, so like, uh, you know, you got to put into account structure, structural, uh, integrity, like, um, does your building have enough, you know, is its walls thick enough? Does it have pillars where um, there needs to be pillars? Does it have a strong roof? Like, is it going to hold together? Is it on a firm foundation? Uh, you know, stuff like that. And then again, when you come on inside, you like, even, um, see, a lot of things that look fantasy in Minecraft, you know, again, can correlate to realism because, you know, in the medieval ages, you know, the insides of castles actually looked very grand. Like, if you look at any pictures of any, like, royal palace or, 
even just a normal castle, you'll notice that there's you know typically plastered walls, paintings, tapestries, stuff like that. And that's kind of the theme I'm going with here for this sort of council chamber. Is I'm using that white plaster and I'm making it you know look pretty you know pretty extravagant and you know, really nice. And that's kind of the theme I'm trying to go for here. Is just very uh, between that realistic and fantastical um, theme. So I hope that answer your, your uh, question, Bob. Um, I'm not sure if it does or not, but um, I kind of skirted around it because I, I don't really know how to answer that directly. So, uh, but anyway, on to our next question, Alex Dim, could you somehow copy the finished castle and paste it into a private world in which then can download it and mess around with it? Yes. Um, it'll most likely, if this castle is ever finished, uh, my plan is to put it up for download so that you guys can build or you guys can download it and do whatever you want. So eventually I'm hoping that this will be um, available to you guys so that you can uh, do whatever you want. So yes, I hope that answers your question there. Um, so now our next question is by Adrian Grindbecken. Grindbecken. Did you do anything creative like, for example, drawing or painting before you started to build in Minecraft? Um, I did a little bit. I never really got into it to, like to a uh, professional degree. Like, I, I never, I've never been good at shading. Like, I've, I'm pretty good at, guess, at shapes and, you know, modeling. Like, I like drawing buildings, but I don't like drawing people. I don't like drawing nature. Um, like pretty much, you know, I like doing conceptual drawings like uh, ships or buildings, um, stuff like that. That's my speciality. That's what I kind of like to do. And I guess that kind of correlates into Minecraft. You know, I've always liked to draw buildings and ships. Um, not like medieval ships, but like spaceships, you know, that's another thing that I really like, would like to do at one point, is uh, make a spaceship or something in Minecraft. I did, actually. Um, if you go to my Planet Minecraft page and go to the very bottom, um, there is the Valiant, uh, which is a sort of dragonfly-shaped ship. Um, so you guys, I encourage you guys to go check that out. Um, but yeah, that's one spaceship I've done before, and I would like to do another one in the future. So, um, but I hope that answers your question. I never did. I, I did go to graphics design for three um, three semesters. Uh, so I did do a lot of other drawings and paintings and stuff like that. But it was just kind of like, you know, I went to a crap school for uh, graphics design. So, anyways, that's that. So now Ethan Johnson, his question is, what got you started into YouTube? Do you play other games in your spare time besides Minecraft? I do a little bit on the spare time. I play a little bit with my brother. We play things like Homeworld, um, you know, the Homeworld Remastered. We play usually play the FX mod. Um, it adds in the different races and stuff. Uh, for those of you that actually play Homeworld, the mod adds in the Bentuzi, the Progenitors, the Tyrannic Raiders. Um, there's another race too. Uh, the, the Kadeshi. Um, and it adds in all kinds of different ships and stuff, and it's really nice. Great mod, my favorite mod of Minecraft, or pfft, Homeworld. But uh, yeah, I like to play that. I play a little bit of Witcher 3 uh, on the occasion. I played some Crusader, you know, different games, stuff like that. I like to play um, mainly strategy games, though, if I play outside of uh, Minecraft. Um, but yes, couldn't think of a name. What are your inspirations? So this is actually, couldn't think of a name is the name of the guy. Um, he's Rohan McCaffrey on the server. So what are your aspirations for YouTube career in the future? What hobbies do you have and enjoy? My hobby is this. This is what I do. Um, I don't really do anything else as far as hobbies are concerned. Um, you know, I really don't have time outside of this to have any other hobby because YouTube, Minecraft, you know, the building part of it takes forever. And then making the videos part even takes, you know, forever to do. So I don't really have time for anything else. Um, you know, I do work and then I spend time with my family and then I do YouTube and then I sleep. Um, so, you know, there's kind of that order. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I'm sure I used to like hunting. Uh, I really enjoyed hunting back in the day. Uh, sh you know, I really, really enjoyed hunting, fishing. I was an outdoor guy, country guy, but then college changed me. And that's about that, so. And then Coco011116 asks, how long have you and Lara been married and how did you meet? So for your question on that, um, for the answer for that is, Lara and I have been married for currently two years and eight months. Um, and it's been a great two years and eight months. We've, uh, we met in high school. And that seems like a long time ago. Um, so technically, we've been together for about nine years, I think. 
I think nine years, ten, something like that. Um, so we've we've been together for a long time. Um, and then we got engaged for a year, and then we've been married for two years, eight months, and we're almost two, three years. So it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. So, um, but anyways, guys, that is our Q&A for today, and I hope you guys have some more questions for me uh, on our next video. Go ahead and put Q&A in front of your question, and then I will try to answer them in our next crying video. And um, hopefully um, you guys can put some good questions down there. Ask whatever you want. Maybe it's regarding conquest. Maybe it's regarding you know, my personal life or regarding you know something else. Who knows? You know, just ask me some questions, and hopefully I'll be able to answer them clearly. And uh, you know, something that you guys will be able to uh, enjoy. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. We have built the council hall, and um, go ahead and do slash warp crying to get here. I uh, hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you're from. I will see you on the next one. Till then, bye-bye. Uh,